guy breaking the record from uh, uh, if the numbers of students in the class were 40, my position is either 39 or 40. So you are asking about Jesus. I can tell you Jesus is real. Amen. When I met him, the first thing he did, he touched my mind. He touched my mind. And everything dead came alive. In the same school, I mean the same school where I never passed. The same school, I started representing the school in, in quiz competitions. In debate, in quiz, I started representing the same, th that same school. So if someone says to you that Jesus is not real, it's because he has not encountered him. His supernatural power. So people agree, they say, okay, let's choose a date like today to be Easter Day. It's just to commemorate, okay, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. It was an event thousands of years ago, and we are here witnesses that indeed Jesus died and he resurrected. So to this morning, being our Omega Thanksgiving, I'll be sharing with you, thanking God for Calvary. Thanking God for Calvary. Calvary is the place where Jesus Christ, the Son of God, willingly laid down his life for the redemption of humanity. Nobody forced him. The Bible says in John chapter 10, Jesus was speaking. He says, no man taketh my life away from me. I lay, I lay it down willingly. And I have the power to pick it up again. So at Calvary, Jesus went to the cross willingly. He laid down his life. He had the option to say, no, 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 no. No more. The pain will be too much. The shame will be too much. But Jesus took that challenge and he went to the cross for the sin he did not commit. He chose to die for you and I. Why will I not celebrate? Why will I not shout for joy? Go with me, brethren, to the book of John chapter 20. The same account of Jesus' resurrection, you can get it also in the book of Matthew chapter 28, but let's consider John, the account of St. John chapter 20. It's going to be a long chapter, but just for us to chronicle the account of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. As a matter of fact, from chapter 19, his trials and everything that has to do with his, you know, conviction, his final, you know, the hunging on the tree. And eventually in chapter 20, reading from verse 1. The first day of the week. Come at Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre and see at the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she run it and come into Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre and we know not where they have laid him. And Peter therefore went forth and that other disciples and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciples did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stoop, he stooping down and looked in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then come Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and see the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then 
went in. Also the other disciples, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. And as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and said to angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet with the body to her. Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposed him to be the gardener. For I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to tell my brethren and said unto them, I ascend unto my father and unto your father. And unto your God, my God, and unto your God. Mary Magdalene came and told him the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then, the same day at, the, at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he shewed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sin ye remit, they shall be remitted unto them. And whosoever sin ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand the prints of the nails, and put my finger in the print of his nail. And thrust my hand into the side. I will not believe. We still have the generation of Thomas. And after eight days again, the disciples were within. And Thomas with them. Then came Jesus. And the doors were shut. And stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach thither thy finger. And behold my hand, and reach thither thy hand, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Then Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou seest me, and thou believest, blessed a day that I have not seen, and yet have believed. Praise the Lord. The accounts of the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection as recorded by the different apostles who were witnesses to the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ established the fact that Jesus indeed died and he resurrected. At their own time, during their time, the Bible even said in that uh, John chapter 21 that Jesus Christ in uh, chapter 21 now we read verse 1 it says and after these things the, all these things we've read in chapter 20 it says after these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias and on this wise show he himself praise the Lord meaning that after he resurrected you know before he resurrected or before he died he was with the disciples everywhere he went the disciples were with him but now, after his death, now, he's no longer with them. Physically, he has become a spirit. He has gone back to the Father, where he came back, uh, where he came from. 
And now, he only comes to them occasionally. But within the space of 40 days, he was with them, showing them, eating with them, praise the Lord, until eventually in the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 1, praise the Lord, when he was taken up to heaven. So all this account attests to the fact that Jesus Christ of Nazareth died and he resurrected. And that the grave of Jesus Christ is empty. The bones are not there. Because it would take the bone to be in the, in the sepulchre, you know, to actually, you know, convince people that he actually died and he's still in the grave. And this morning, by the grace of God, I'm going to be telling you the reason for you to thank God, amen, that Jesus actually went to the cross. The number one reason is that Jesus Christ actually offered himself as a sacrifice. If you were to be in Jesus' shoe, I'm asking you, will you have volunteered to die for criminals? The Bible says no. He said, hardly can you even see somebody that would die for a righteous man. How much more someone says, I want to go and die for criminals, for people who, whose path is supposed to be eternal damnation. Because the righteousness of God demands that all those who have sinned against God from Adam should go to hell. So Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So by the death of Jesus Christ, by that sacrifice, humanity will now have the opportunity for eternal life. Now in the book of Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5 verse 8, the Bible says, but God commended his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Praise the Lord. I love that account very well. Now, let's read verse, chapter 5, verse 8. Now, let's read verse 9. It says in verse 8, it says, okay, let me read from, from verse 6, actually. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Are you listening to me? Are you still with me? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Tell somebody beside you it's resurrection morning. Uh, so you should also be resurrected. So verse 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some will even dare to die. You, can you understand that? He now says in verse 8, But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He now said in verse 9 again, he said, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Praise God. In Ephesians chapter two, 5, verse 2, he says, and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling servo. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, please, I don't want to sermonize you. I want you to follow me in the spirit in order for you to understand so you'll be able to appreciate what Jesus Christ did. If Jesus, now during the prayer and uh, during the three-day prayer, we're sharing with you, he said, if Jesus Christ had not died, every man will have remained in their situation. That person is sick, he would die in that sickness. Because the devil came, colonized everybody, and he came with oppression and terror. And so these were the things that Jesus Christ saw, and Jesus came with the way of escape. He came with the opportunity that man should not go this old way any longer. Praise the Lord. And that opportunity is still here today, but how many people actually believe this? Some of them would tell you that, you know, Christianity is a scam. Those who say that is because they have never tasted the power. The power. Now, I just shared my testimony with you, right? Now, but there are so many other testimonies that he has given unto me. So many. In fact, there was a time in my life, I've given my life to Christ now, but the devil still wanted to kill me. And I was involved in an accident 
the first act, I think I was about 17 years then, I was, you know, riding a motorbike, and I came face to face with a caterpillar. So the devil wanted to smash my head and finish me then. But you know what? He was there with me. I fell by the wayside and I saw the caterpillar, the tire. I saw the tire just a few inches. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise up? I've seen somebody doing like this. Everybody is guilty. One person is just enough. So you better tell somebody beside you, say, please cooperate. Uh, be alive. Today is resurrection morning. We need to celebrate and thank God for the forgiveness of sin. You can imagine how terrible people are. Sin that the devil introduced. I was sharing with my children uh, in a Bible study the other day. Was it yesterday? Yes. You know, my daughter asked a question from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 or thereabout, where it was talking about, I looked around amongst thousands, I can't find any single woman. He said, I also looked around, I only find one man. So she said, so, daddy, is it, does it mean that women are so bad like that, that there is no single <laughs> So we said, okay, let's go into the Bible. Let's begin to consider, I mean, let's begin to divide the word of God. Let's see why the battle against the woman. We went to Genesis chapter 3. The devil came against that woman because, you see, women are so unique. There is nobody that has that grace to carry life like a woman. They are the one that has been given the grace and empowered by God to carry life on their womb for nine months. To carry the image of God. Amen. Amen. Now the devil seen that, the devil became mad at the woman. And so he came in Genesis 3 to deceive the, the, the woman so that the woman would deceive the husband. Do you understand? So the battle started in Genesis but it will surprise you that the battle did not end in Genesis. Now, in Revelation chapter 12, the battle continued. So, women, they need our prayer. Amen. Amen. The battle that started in January continued. The Bible says the dragon came against the woman with great wrath. After being cast out from heaven, now the devil, now, now read verse, uh, Re Re Revelation chapter 12 verse 13. Let's read from verse 13 now. Now be seated everybody. Thank you very much. And there, and no, let's read verse 12 now. One to go. Verse 12. He said, therefore rejoice ye heaven, and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. The woman is the one empowered with the capacity and capability to bring forth the man child. Praise the Lord. And he went on in verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and the times and have a time from the face of the serpent. That same serpent of Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Now continue. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Can you see the contradictions against the woman? But thank God, Jesus came through for that woman. Now the Bible says, and the art helped the woman, and the art opened her mouth and swallowed up the water which the dragon cast out of his mouth in order for it to swallow the woman. So God stood to help the woman. 
The battle that, was, that started in Genesis continued in Revelation, but the woman still remains standing. And that is why at times, you as a man, you see a woman, you have better continue to pray for them. That is not where I'm going today. Just to let you know that even at the resurrection of Jesus, or before Jesus went to the cross, women were beside Jesus Christ. When Peter was denying Jesus like no man's business. Women, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for women. When women are blessed. My wife is a woman. My mom is a woman. And we have a lot of virtuous women here. Amen. Women that have encountered Jesus, the Son of God. And so the battles against you, Jesus came to help you. And I pray for you indeed. You shall be helped in Jesus' name. Amen. So we continue. By the death of Jesus, by the death and the resurrection of Jesus, forgiveness of sin became possible. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says in Hebrew chapter 9 verse 22, And almost all things are by the law purchased by the blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That is how the righteousness of God needed to be meted out. The righteousness of God demanded that a sacrifice had to be made, and that sacrifice had to be the blood of someone who is clean. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. And in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Praise the Lord. We have, we have redemption and we have forgiveness of sin. Only through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nobody, dead or alive, has the power to forgive any man except God, the one who created man. And Jesus Christ, being the God incarnate, he stood in that position or in, and he still standing in that position to be the only person that can forgive sin. The only person that can say, go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to thank God for Calvary because it was at Calvary that God reconciled with man. The enmity between man and God was settled at Calvary. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Reading from verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given unto us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the word himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Praise God. Amen. Meaning that at Calvary, when Jesus hung on that tree, Jesus Christ reconciled man back to God. The garden of Eden that was lost, the authority that was lost, amen, the peace that was lost, Jesus Christ brought it back. That is why I can tell you categorically, that your life henceforth will be filled with peace of mind in the name of Jesus. Amen. Romans chapter 5 and verse 10 also says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his very life. So everything we are doing now, we do it by the consciousness of what Jesus Christ has done for us. A pastor, I've always said it, no pastor has the power to do any miracle except the one that God has given unto him. Pastors can give you prayer points. Amen. Amen. Some of them will give you, but they will not pray. They will be supervising other people. Hey, you are not praying. <laughs> the ones who love their destiny, they are calling the prayer point, they are praying also. Praise the Lord. So there is no pastor that has any power to answer any man's prayer. So they give you prayer point, but God is the one that answers. And one thing about this great God is that he meets everybody at the point of individual's need. 
Do you know the kind of miracle that God has performed in this ministry? I've lost count. Look at that sister. She's not even, she didn't come out to testify. Where was it? I think it was uh, uh, last two weeks. Was the last week Friday? Last two weeks Friday, right? A sister was here who had never been able to eat. She was not, she wasn't eating. Do you remember that woman? Is she in service this morning? Yes. Where is she? She couldn't eat. You all saw that day that I just gave her a bottle of water that was blessed and prayed on. And what happened here? She started vomiting. Do you know that on Saturday, she has a testimony. You didn't come early. You came early. She didn't come early. She has a testimony. She started eating. Her, her stomach opened up. That devil that was blocking her appetite was the devil the Lord flushed out of this place that day. Now, one of her sisters, who is an usher, she said to me, say, that I'm so surprised. Only ordinary water. She started vomiting. Uh, it wasn't ordinary water. That was the blood of this Jesus we are celebrating. The resurrected Jesus. His blood is still powerful till tomorrow. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. At times we are praying and I say to people, by specific instruction, close your eyes, open your mouth and drink the blood of Jesus Christ. And you see people vomiting. Where did the blood come from? That blood still answered till tomorrow. I speak over your life. That blood will defend you. Amen. That blood will secure you. Amen. That blood will drive in your miracles Amen. in the name Jesus Christ. Amen. Please just believe. Don't follow all those people on the internet that they're talking trash. They don't know nothing. Some of them will tell you religion is a scam. Christianity is a scam. It's because they've never encountered. So will they tell us that Satan is a scam? Satan, that the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 14, he has held every man. He, 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 he locked up every man in his own prison house. He will not allow them to go out. He's the one giving out oppression, giving out you know, problems, sicknesses, diseases. He's the one eventually that will kill them. Everything evil is the one that is in charge. He has a kitchen. From that kitchen, he serves people. He serves evil. We're talking about evil family tree. He is the one that planted it. He is the chief gardener. He assigned other lesser gardeners to monitor it, but he's the overall general overseer of wickedness, of affliction. If not that Jesus came on the scene, where would we have been? Everything that is evil, he is the one in charge. He took that sister's appetite. Can you imagine somebody not eating? The same sister, many years ago, many, uh, many months ago, is she the one? Come, come, come. I think she was also in the habit of eating clay, if I remember. Clay, uh -huh. clay was her food. So the Lord took clay from her now. And the devil said, the food that I gave you, you are not eating it, clay. Can you imagine? She was not eating then. It was clay she was eating. Am I, am I right? Only clay. Ordinary clay. Sand. Maybe you are still here. You are here also. You say you always crave for clay. You, are, you need deliverance actually. Because it is not ordinary. Do you know that it was when God delivered her, she, she was delivered. But after her deliverance, the devil now removed the appetite. He's saying as much as you don't have appetite for clay, you will not have an appetite for food. And I wasn't aware. That day I was not even aware. And then somebody just said, Daddy, this lady is not eating. No. Because the devil will not allow her to come out for deliverance. He's just as like some of you. He knows how to monitor you. He will tell you, don't go out. Don't go. We pull you on your seats. Because he knows as soon as you step out, like the Lord did to Dorothy. You remember her story? Uh -huh. That day she forced herself to the front here. And the Lord broke her free from pneumonia of over 20 years. So what was your testimony after 
you drank uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. Go ahead, just speak. Um, my name is Nadia of the Holy Ghost. I thank God for delivering. Um, okay. Okay. So it's uh, like before I eat, I had to take appetite tabs. Then after eating, then I have to take tabs for not vomiting it back. Are you, 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 you had that? Because even if I take water, I vomit. Even if I take food, I have to vomit it back. So I had to, like, prevent it before I eat anything. But I thank God from that day I eat well. Um, I had a problem, like, I'm so weak early morning. I can't, even if I'm going to church, I wake up. I don't have energy. I will just starve for almost 30 minutes, starving to wake up, to get the energy. Like, I go take my bath, then I proceed to church or go to work. But I thank God from that day. I got delivered. I eat well. Uh, some people <laughs> said that I, I'm about to get delivered and not to stop eating. Like <laughs> no, it's better for you to eat, but moderately now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, for how many years w w were you having that affliction? So it happened before. If I remember at home, even my mom used to force me to eat. So it has been... For years. Yes. It, it, you, it reached a time when she has to bring out stroke to fight, fight me so that I can eat. So I thank God. Now she's grown up. Now who is going to beat her not, not to eat? Praise the Lord. Celebrate that deliverance. Put your hands together for that deliverance. That is to authenticate the resurrected Christ. We all gather, we call his name. We don't call a name of a dead man and we answer you. It can only be that Jesus Christ that is risen and is alive forevermore. So when we call his name, he say, I'm here. What do you want me to do? The blood, Bible says the life of a thing is in the blood. Now when we call his blood, his blood is as efficacious as his person. So that day, I told you, some of you may, may be thinking, say, ah, what is it? When you have faith in the name Jesus, the son of the living God, ordinary water can perform that miracle. Don't, don't be deceived by any prophet. Don't be deceived by any pastor. You and I, we are saved by that same blood. We have equal access. Are you listening to me? Yes, equal access. You are sick. You want to pray for somebody. Get a bottle of water. Let your faith be released. Declare in the name Jesus, this is no longer ordinary water. As soon as you say that in the spirit realm, it changed. And that day, I didn't even pray on that water. I just held it and I gave it to her. Because if you understand that you as a child of God, your hand, they are not, your hand is not even ordinary. Your look is not ordinary. If somebody is possessed of the devil, you look into the eyeball of that person. Power is meeting with power. Have you ever seen a witch before? A witch is looking at you, or a witch does this to you. Ah, you better go for prayer. You say it all like this. Because of the spirit in her, so, and she can brag about that, how much more you a child of God, that you have encountered the life of Jesus, the son of God. So Jesus physically is no longer here, but you are the one representing him. Is somebody listening to me? You are looking at me as if you don't understand what I'm saying. He is not here, but I am the one representing him. That is why whoever is sick and oppressed of the devil, they can't come before Jesus and they go the same way. So if you have conditioned your mind that that is, come please. Don't worry. Give me that, remind me that word now. It doesn't matter. It shall not be like that again in your family. It shall never be like that. Why am I saying that? I know the God that I'm serving. Now, before you came under this unction, it may be the experience, but because you are here, I'm speaking specifically over you now. It's a new dawn from you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We are preaching for his family. 
He has picked it for his family. Every family member that connected to you, no more premature death. And I'm saying the same thing to every one of you. If the devil has been wasting people in your family, that waster, his mission over your family is over forevermore in the name of Jesus. Now rise up and continue to win in life. It's a decree. And so it is in Jesus' name. So boldly, call your family member and tell them it doesn't matter. It's a new dawn. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There is no man born of a woman that can attack the devil. That notorious devil, nobody. Let me show you the picture the Bible painted about him. Go with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 14. It will surprise you. Read it from verse 12. The Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down from the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Are you listening to me? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the mount north. I will ascend above the height of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Are you listening? Whoever the devil has locked in the prison of sickness, they must die there. Whoever he has locked in the prison of premature death, before Jesus came, they must die there. Whatsoever embargo that was operating upon any man, the embargo remained. No help from anybody. But when Jesus came, Jesus overturned everything. He gave man another opportunity, another chance. He gave me that chance. He gave me, another, he gave me that opportunity. That is why I can stand before you to preach. In those days, I was fighting people with knives. Area boy. Tout. But he looked at me. Oh, he stretched his hand towards me. The hand of love, the hands of compassion. He picked me up, dusted me, and he gave me a message. If you have not met him, you may not know how real, how reliable, how dependable this Jesus Christ is. People are sick. They come to him. He heals them. Free. Unlike that wicked devil. Is anybody here this morning? You have not encountered him. You're only playing religion. Please, you had better repent. You had better have a change of mind. In Christ is the fullness of everything you are looking for in life. Don't do it religiously. Are you still here with me? Yes, Shall we rise up? I've seen another person. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. As soon as I met Jesus, you know what? My father died when I was just age seven. My biological father. Now, Jesus became a, f a father figure unto me. He started leading me. I hear his voice. He gives me specific direction about everything in life. There was a time I was just age 18. I was living alone, mature. As a, as a young boy, I was living alone, responsible. Serving God faithfully. By the time I got married, I was 10 times, 10 years older than my colleagues, my contemporaries. 
He started watching over me. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Go this way. And people started looking at my character. It's because I met him. That Jesus is real. You know what? Everything about my life, including my marriage, he planned out everything. That is why in 27 years of marriage, peace, tranquility. No, hey, 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 in marriage. No, 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 no. No shouting on ourselves. Because he chose my wife for me as a good father that he is. I, I, is somebody still with me? Yeah. You can't be a child of God and don't experience or don't enjoy the, the, the things that we enjoy in our family. Somebody say, oh, where did I meet this woman? Said this woman, where did I get this woman? It's because you are not, you know, you are of the same family. It, Jesus can't give you a woman and you are regretting. No, 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 no. Likes, we always begat light. Are you with me? That is why we encourage young men. Serve God. Know Jesus Christ for yourself. The life we are living is not so cheap. If you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, life is not cheap. Life is very tedious. Life is burdensome. There are, in fact, life is war. Thank you. You are not in Christ. You are in crisis. Everything about my life planned out. You're just stepping into. Somebody will say, see, I, didn't, I never looked into the diary. Say, where, what time is Easter? Before we put that program. I didn't check any diary. Holy Spirit, please give me the, pra the program for the year. Choose this date, this date for this program. Now on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maximum in part Dubai. He's the, he's the all wise God. You can't walk with him, the all wise God, and be a foolish child. Is somebody sit with me? Yes, now, in our family, in our lineage, good health is our heritage, Amen. prosperity is our heritage. Amen. In our family, peace of mind is our heritage. Amen. I will show you this shortly now. So you say you are a child of God and you don't have peace of mind? Then I, I, I'm not very sure you are of this kingdom. Because there is a prince in our kingdom. He's, we call him the prince of peace. How can you say you belong to him and you don't have peace of mind? Glory to God. Your excellence is please be seated. So, the last thing, the last reason for you to thank God for Calvary is that Jesus gave us victory over death. What did I say? Let me tell you. When a person sleeps, especially children of God, we don't die. We only sleep. And we open our eyes at the headquarters. Are you with me? For every man on earth, every man is created a spirit being. We have souls and we live in the body. The, bo the reason is for your earthly existence, God has given you your body, which is your tabernacle, to live here. That is why as people age, you discover that that body becomes frail. Okay, it's just like the natural building. The house is old. It now gets dilapidated. Okay? The same way, your natural body. It gets to a time after many years of work here on heart, everything starts dropping. It used to be very youthful before, but now at age 70. How many of you have seen the picture of this former president of Nigeria? The man is just doing as if he's still a, he's, he's, a, he's an old man. He went on the treadmill. He was doing the, the energy is no longer there. He's only trying to do what, you know. He can't now. Let's go and let's go and run 100 meters race. He will not do. He, will, he can't try it. But there was a time he was at the peak of his strength. Are you with me? 
But as the years rose in, the law of diminishing returns. Everything started dropping. Started dropping. Why? He's now preparing to go. And that is the journey of every man. That's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, you're reading from verse 1, it will shock you the revelation there. So, but we, the children of God, we do not die. We only sleep. Because death is our enemy. Now, but Bible says in Revelation, there is the second death for the unbeliever. That one is horrible. Whoever is not in Christ. We are preaching about Jesus tonight. Some of them, they are making jest of us. They are saying that, uh, hey, 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 you know, how many of you have gone out, you want to give somebody a flyer? They say, hey, hey, hey. I say, okay, 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 I'll go continue, no problem. At times we see you go there and say, please, say, hey, hey, hey. In fact, there was a time I wanted to give a guy. I would say, he said, hey, come, 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 don't, 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 don't. <laughs> I just, I said, oh, God, sorry. <laughs> you know, in my, in my heart, I said, no, me, me, cause your problem now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> the devil that caused the problem, I'm, I, I'm inviting you now in order for you to escape him. You want to fight with me. Praise the Lord. The same devil that is hardening their hearts is the same devil that we first meet when they close their eyes in death. As soon as they close their eyes in death, they open it. The devil, okay, welcome, welcome. I've been, wa I've been waiting for you. He said, no, I don't know you. He said, uh -uh, you know me very well. Are you not a liar? Are you not a fornicator? Are you not a cheat? Those are my properties with you. And so we all shut them into the temporary place. They are taking transit. And that is hellfire. Do you understand? Now, after the whole show now, they will now promote them from, the, from hellfire now to the lake of fire. Where the fire will never ever quench. The fire will never run out. Uh, you will not go there in Jesus' yeah. name. So Jesus gave us victory over death. We are not afraid of death. In fact, our portion in redemption is old age. Amen. Amen. It says in that 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 55, it says, O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? Now listen, it says, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. He said, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So whoever does not belong to Jesus Christ does not have victory, cannot enjoy victory. Are you still with me? Yes, Help me find out from that person beside you and say, oh, how far? <laughs> Glory to God. So we should, we should have this at the back of our mind. Let's just review this before we go to the blessings of resurrection that I'm going to share with you before we round up now. What is the first thing that the death of, I mean, that, that Calvary gave us? The first, why do we thank God for Calvary? What was the first thing we thank God for? The sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Number two? No, forgiveness of sin is number two. Number three, God reconciled us to himself. We no longer belong to the devil. We have an option now. We have escaped from the camp of that wicked devil. And number four is victory. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, as we round up this morning, we want to thank God or we want to see the blessings of resurrection. The blessing that the resurrection of Jesus Christ brought to believers. Are you with me? Shall we rise up now? I just want you to appreciate Jesus and thank him that you, you have this understanding of what Jesus Christ came for. It's not everybody that has this understanding. Now, I was sharing with you during the uh, Opportunity Evil Family three, uh, meetings. 
I said to you, I said, if you had been here 1,000 years ago, you would have done what they did then as a, as a typical idol worshiper. In fact, you would have, have been a priest or a priestess. If you have been around at that time, what they did will have been what you will have, do, have done. But in our own generation, we thank God. The knowledge of Jesus Christ is everywhere. So we can gather together and say we are worshiping Jesus instead of us being under one tree. Hallelujah. Amen. I wanted to close your eyes and say, Father, I'm so thankful for Calvary. I thank you for Calvary. I appreciate you for coming. Now, brethren, open your mouth and pray. Let it be deliberate. Tell the Lord, Father, thank you for Calvary. Thank God for Calvary. Lord, I thank you. If not for Calvary, where will I have been today? If not for Calvary, appreciate him. Glorify him. Lord, thank you for Calvary. I appreciate you for Calvary. Thank you, Father, Lord God. Calvary, give me a new hope. Calvary, give me a new name. Calvary brought me face to face with mercy. To you be the praise, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah. Brethren, these are the reasons we thank God. Who am I? Who is my father's house? Or what is my father's house? That I can stand and I'm sharing the word of life with people. And this mighty God will now use me as an agent to heal other people. By birth, we're nobody. But by redemption, he made us someone, somebody. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Can you see how redemption changed your identity forever? So you are not that poor person you think you are. Because it's all about your mindset. Some people will look at themselves and say, poor me. You are not poor. Redemption decked you with all the blessings of God. The blessing that money cannot buy. So when we come before the Lord and we are singing, what a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. That song, eh? Any nation of the world that I find myself, you say, Pastor, you are preaching. That is my first song. Till I go to be with the Lord. Why? Because that is his sacrifice. He requested for it. He demanded for it. So when we are saying, the things that are impossible, the things that money cannot buy, do you know the gravity of that song? You don't know. I don't, that lady said, even to eat food, she had to take medicine. After food, she had to take another medicine to sustain the food. Yes, yeah, some of us just undo apple anyhow. <laughs> Before you eat it there, you just cut it like this, throw it up like this. <laughs> now be seated, God bless you, people of God. There, there was a sister also at Science and Wonders Dubai. The same situation. She had a testimony of another lady who said, you know, I was sharing the testimony. You know, praise the Lord. You know, some people are always very mad at me when I'm sharing testimony. I say, what is your problem? All the accounts of the Bible. Were you there when Jesus died? I think we're reading the account. That's the testimony. <laughs> So now we are not sharing testimony with you of what Jesus has done in our own time. And you say, I should, be, I should not say it. No, it's not possible. So I was sharing the testimony of a lady who came to me also. She was so tiny. She looked so emaciated. He said, Pastor, I don't normally eat. Eh? I said, go and get a bottle of water. Do you know that you can do that for your friends too? That I, I, I hope that we appreciate it. That is why I don't pray for people just indiscriminately. No, 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 no. If I pray for you, you must value the prayer because I know my God will answer my prayer. So if, if, I, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you approach me for prayer, you must value my God. I, so that's why I don't, I don't give a damn. What when somebody says the person is dying of this? It's not, it's every man's choice. 
every man will bear his own burden. That's what the Bible says. So when someone comes to you and says, please pray for me, find out from the person, will you value it? Because what people don't pay for, they don't value it. But like Naaman, uh -huh. Second Kings chapter 5, when you tell somebody, before I pray for you, go and knock your head on the wall 21 times, come back. He said, ah, no, that thing, I think that thing is going to work. Or, or tell him, go and fast 21 days, then come. I don't have to do that by his grace. It's a gift. I don't have to struggle for it. If somebody listen to me, and I'm speaking to you now, as you are seated there, whatsoever is not supposed to be in your body, let it leave you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I challenge diabetes. What is it looking for in your body? Asthma, cancer, leukemia, whatever it is. Everything that does not glorify God in your body as I speak, they fizzle out in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says, the thieves with fear that we fade every stranger, with fear that we fade out of their hidden places. He says, as soon as they hear my words, they will obey. So that is what happened. Now, so I'm saying to you, it's not only the pastor that can do that. You begin to practice it wherever you find yourself. People have been doing it and we are, God is giving us results because Jesus is real. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great, great and mighty things that you don't know. Really? So this is how God can answer prayer. Yes, because we are calling a mighty God. Among all those people who, who claim to be somebody, Jesus Christ is outstanding. Outstanding. He's the one that will be with you everywhere. He has given you that word. So why are you afraid? In fact, some of you, you will travel for Christmas. You run away. Seven years ago, you have not traveled. You must travel this Christmas. <laughs> Go and show them that I am still alive. Oh. <laughs> but make sure you, you rub yourself very well before you go. <laughs> you cook yourself very well. You know, my friend, I don't know how many of you know him. I like that. Yeah, one of these days, he's going to pay us a visit. The, the same guy, he was to represent his school. You know, uh, what do they call it now? 100 meters, whatever. Uh -huh. Two days before the contest, he couldn't walk again. He became paralyzed. A grown-up person, the mom started carrying him. Started backing him. He became paralyzed. He could not walk. Household wickedness. So the mom was carrying him everywhere. Now the man met Jesus, the son of God. And Jesus turned everything around. Now Jesus not giving me mandate. He said, now nah, you will visit your village now. He said, when you get to your village, you will do some things for me. He said, the first person that you are going to meet, you must do everything for the person to lay hands on you. Because God has already pinpointed every one of them. Uh, this one is part of them. This one. So as soon as he got down and he got to his village, the first woman, he said, hey, mama. Now the mama still knew what happened. He said, Mama, for many years I've not said, please pray for me. Mama said, no, I'm not. <laughs> the mama said, no, I'm not your mama. He said, ah, Mama, please pray for me now. You know what my friend did? He kept a hand bah, on her head, on his head. That night, the mama, she kicked the bucket. The next person, they, so every one of them, that is why we pray, we, we normally tell you, there are hands joined together. You don't know how to disorganize them. You disorganize them through the power of the Holy Spirit. When you are empowered by God, then you can now go to them and challenge them. When you receive the anointing of Jehu, then you can now go and challenge Jezebel. But if you have not, call, if you have not gotten that anointing, hey, don't go. 
the other one, as soon as he saw him also, he said, hey, Baba, I've come uh, from, uh, from town, from Lagos, I've come. Hey, Baba, please pray for me. The man said, no, 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 no. I'm not praying for anybody. He said, Baba, no, no, you have to pray for me. He kept the man's hands, he, he laid it on his head. That one, where he was, he started swelling up. He swole up until he busted. See, the weak, you don't know how wicked the wicked are. That was how, in three days, I think about three or four or five people were eliminated. And afterwards, he came back to Lagos. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't know who Jesus is. That is why some of us, we toil with him. Now, let me just tell you what are the blessings that Jesus Christ, the resurrection of Jesus brought to us, number one. We talked about it, access to forgiveness. Number two, eternal life. Now, access to forgiveness, let's read Acts chapter 10, verse 43. Acts 10, 43. To him, give all the prophet witness. Acts 10, 43. That through his name, through his name, whosoever believe in him shall receive remission of sin. Power of Another blessing that the death of Jesus Christ brought for us believers is eternal life. Our life does not end with, he, with this life. Are you with me? Yes, as soon as I close my eyes, I open it in another place. That is the kingdom. And we become spirit. We no longer do have to do with this. This one has a lot of limitations. For instance... Elder Mo, uh, sir, David, you can't see the person behind you. You don't know what he's doing. You don't even know the, 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 the color of his shirt. Do you understand? But in the spirit realm, you know everything. You know everything. You no longer wear human flesh, human body. Amen. You now become a spirit. Glory to God. Amen. So, through the death of Jesus Christ, we have access to eternal life. Now, I love this. The death of Jesus Christ also brought the Holy Spirit for, to us. The Holy Spirit. Before Jesus died, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit was not activated. But as soon as Jesus Christ died, Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be ye baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now, how many of you in this meeting this morning, you speak in tongues? Can I see your hand? You speak in tongues. Brethren, now lift up your hand very well. If you are not ashamed. No, no, no. Okay, put down there. You know that the tongue you have is not counterfeit. Because some people's tongue is kaoku, kaokudi, ka, ka, kaokudi, kaokudi. And kaokudi in... <laughs> Bring money, bring money. Because the, the guy is a business person. That is not the tongue I'm talking about. The one the Holy Ghost gives to you is real. It's not the one you copy somebody speaking beside you. You say, oh, this is our sister Esther speak our own. Coco, 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 coco. Oh, coco, my coco, coco, my coco. <laughs> no. The Holy Ghost gives, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, and the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. It was after the death of Jesus Christ that we have access to this. Now, when I speak in tongues, I speak languages. And when I'm speaking, I know what I'm saying. If it is attack, if it is intercession, intercessory prayer, do you understand? The same Holy Spirit in you will tell you what you are talking about, what you are doing. When you begin to go deeper and deeper and deeper, that is if the Holy Spirit that you, ha you have is original. I was ministering on a young man some years ago. I was conducting deliverance on him, and he started speaking in tongues. I said, hey, keep quiet. That was an ancient language. It looks like tongue. It sounds like tongue, but it is not. If you are not sensitive, there are railing curses upon you as a pastor. 
But the death of the, the of Jesus Christ brought the Holy Spirit. Now look at what Bible says in jo John chapter seven, John chapter seven, and verse from thirty eight to thirty nine. John chapter seven, from verse thirty eight to thirty nine, it says, "He that believeth on me, as the Scripture had said, out of his belly." shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Do you understand? So it was after Jesus resurrected. Don't forget, he told the apostles in, uh, in Luke chapter, chapter 24, if from verse 49, I think, Luke 24, 49, con confirm that, please. He said, Tarry, ye shall receive the... I say, And behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endured with power from on high. So before Jesus Christ left, he told them, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. Now when that Holy Spirit comes, he will empower you to do the impossible. So miracles, signs, and wonders can never be possible without what? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the one that empowers you to do this thing. How many of you here want to heal the sick? You want to lay your hands on the sick and they want, you want to see them healed. Can I see, you, can I see your hand? Are you sure it's everybody? Okay, not everybody. If you are there, you want you. Not everybody lifting up their hands. Actually, very, very, very funny. You want to be the sick, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You should be the one. Someone is sick, just lay hands on the person. And the person recovers. That is the glory of the Father through your life. Now, I want to see you rise up. You want to be a channel of blessing to people. Really. You want to be a channel of blessing. The testimony of our brother, Elder uh, David, till Jesus comes, I will share that testimony wherever I find myself. And, and that's to let you know that the Jesus we're talking about is real. In coma for over one month, and, but Jesus Christ brought him back from the region of death. In those days, sweet that I know, you know, you know, I told you that at that time when I visited him at the hospital, uh, the wife is here. Uh, Sister Esther, please come. See, that is why if you are not a man of faith, you have not started. Sister Esther, that time, you remember, when I visited at the hospital and I'm leaving, what were the things I always say to you? Yeah, uh, during that time, it was a very uh, challenging time. And the healing, though, seemed to be look uh, promising, but then uh, Daddy used to say that the Lord will do it, that he should not uh, uh, fear that God will do it. And, um, and truly, even though the doctors had said that they had done everything that they could, and they were just waiting... I was just wondering uh, if someone tells you they are just waiting. Yes. It's a very tough place. But it I really saw what the Lord did. Uh, yeah, that is the picture there. Within, um, literally, I won that day uh, when I left the hospital. I didn't know what to do. And um, I just went home. I told God, I, I really don't know. But let there be light uh, the following day. By this time tomorrow, that scripture, let there be light. And that was all. Then I went to the hospital on that Sunday morning. Um, today we are talking about resurrection. And uh, truly I saw the resurrection on that day. When I went, uh, I saw him. Uh, he was uh, awake and literally very alive very alive and he was looking towards the Where bed. Where was that? Do you remember Last the date? Sunday. On a Sunday? Yes. 
Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Now, you know what happened? As soon as I got the news that this man was in the hospital, he was with us on Sunday here. I spoke with him. Then on Monday, I got that news. Was it on Monday or that same Sunday? Uh, I can't even remember now. No, it was uh, uh, there was uh, a service. Uh, I think it was uh, here. There was the first first of May. Yeah, he, he was he was here yes. on that day. Then the following day, after he took the kids from exactly. school, he as he was taking lunch, then he just screamed. Yes, that was what happened. Now. So I got the news. Ha! Ah, I was in the office, Dubai Church. As soon as I got that news, I went to the altar. I knelt down. And I wept. I said, no, no, no. This man is a servant of God. He is a minister. He, no, Daddy, you can't do that. Whatever the devil has concluded, Lord, you have to reverse it. But we were on that battle for how many months? How many weeks? For three weeks, he was in ICU. Three weeks, he was in ICU, not opening the eyes. Not opening the eyes. So, what the reason I even called that was to let you know, in those days when I visited the hospital, I saw the situation as hopeless, naturally. But as a pastor, I was telling her, don't worry. You don't worry. He he's coming back on his feet. Jesus Christ will not put us to shame. You know, no shame forever. How many of you have this with you? If you have, you are better. If you don't have, you are better get one for yourself. It is not ordinary. It is prophetic. I was telling her, I said, don't worry. This man will rise up. It will be with us again. Amen. But the doctors have already given up. But Dr. Jesus will never give up. And all that we said then, is it not what is happening now? I pray for you. God bless you. I speak over your life. You shall enjoy resurrection power. If somebody said that Jesus is not real, I say you don't know him. Look at this man. His resurrection power brought him on his feet again. Somebody shout Jesus. On that day, it was on a Tuesday, I visited that hospital. Oh, you see, testimonies are meant to encourage people. There are a lot of people walking on the street, but already in the spirit, they are already comatized. On a Tuesday, I went to that hospital, and as I was leaving, the Lord said to me, go back on Wednesday with the three mysteries of the kingdom. Go with your mantle. Go with liquid fire. And go with the blood of sprinkling. You said Jesus is not alive. It's because you don't know him. <laughs> and as soon as we got to the hospital, I said to my wife, stay in the car. I'm going in. Let me just go and administer. I was on my way to the church. And as we got into the ward where he was, still in the same situation, I said to the Nurse, I said, please, I would like to pray. The nurse said, oh, okay, okay. Go, go and I said, okay. Administer the blood of sprinkling. Administer liquid fire on, under his foot and on his head. And the mantle, the Lord said, drop it on his chest. And as soon as that happened, he started vibrating and jacking. He wanted to open his eyes, open the mouth at the same time. And the machine started making... The nurse had to stand up. That was when the resurrection power came. He said, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in your mortal body. At that point, the machine was making noise. The nurse stood up, had to, I knew what has happened. As I walked out of that, the Lord said, it is done. It is done. The man was in the region of death. The Jesus that we preach, Jesus brought him back. Hallelujah. And today, he's on his feet. Amen. 
after leaving the hospital, he was going with this, well, what is it now? Yeah, you know, to ease himself. And I was in the office one day, and the Lord said, go to his house, go and visit him this day. And as I got to him, what the Lord said to do was just embrace him. As I embraced him, ha, under the power of the Holy Spirit, the healing started again. I pray for you. What about the devil stolen from you? Ah, resurrection power will restore it. Whatever the enemy stole, let the resurrection power of God bring it into your life. Somebody shout at him and again. Listen, here we don't deceive people. When we share testimony, we let you know who are those that have benefited from the testimony. Not cock and boo story. The Jesus that we, we the Jesus that we talk about took over and started increasing the healing, the healing process. There are people who did not even suffer half of what is suffered. They are under the under under, under the f six feet below. And now can I share with you, brethren? That is why you should be useful to God. So that when things happen, people will be able to. Uh, petition God on your behalf. You just come to church, you just do it. You say, Pastor, pray. Let me say amen and I'll go home. No. Whatever your hand find it to do, do it. That is where your blessing is. That is how we serve God. Ezekiah was meant to die. Isaiah was the one who delivered the message. Prepare your house. Put your house in order. You will die. That was a verdict from heaven. As soon as Isaiah delivered the message, Ezekiel, I mean, uh, Ezekiah, the Bible says, he turned. He didn't, he didn't negotiate with Isaiah and say, oh, sir, oh, sir, I'm a king. I've been serving. No, 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 no. He had no business with that prophet. He turned his face to the wall. Isaiah chapter 38, he turned his face to the wall and he said to God, God, no, no, no. Look at what I have done. Get my records. I've served you faithfully. I've not kept anything back from you. So for those of you who are serving God, you are better do it wholeheartedly. If you are serving God with your resources, serve him with your resources. If you are serving him with your life, serve him with your life. All this uh, 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 Anky panky people are playing. You think God is unjust? No. God is too faithful to fail. You are an usher. Do it as unto the Lord. You are in the choir. Whatever department you find yourself. He used to be our director at Kent. Coordinating everybody. I said, Daddy, no, no, no. It can't be. It can't be. But do you know what the Lord told me about him? About that case. I will not say it. But because of the mercy of God and because there was somebody to petition based on his work for God. Some of my children were arrested some years ago. They were coming from church. I think it, this is about 12, 13 years ago now. I was in Africa. And they called me, Daddy, we are with them. You know, they had to code it. I said, with who? They said, I said, with them, right? I said, what is on you when you were apprehended? He said, we have the church camera. Ah, I said, no, no, don't worry. You are coming out. I was in Africa. I said, that camera becomes the ark of God. Do you have the ark of God in your life? Do you have, do you have it in your house? I said, you are coming out. After some few hours, they said, Daddy, we are out. Kabbalah, Tansha, Korea. Put your hands together for this Jesus Christ. You can't serve God and you'll be on the losing hand. The devil came, wanted to shame me in ministry, wanted to shame me. Thank God we're on the side of Jesus. 
Thank God his mercy is with us. And these are the benefits of Calvary. These are the blessings we are enjoying. The blessing to stand in authority, to stand in power. Just like every other person came to church for prayer. I didn't know that that prayer was going to kill that lady that day. She came for prayer. And I was praying for her. Small thing. She fell down and died in my office. Ah, issue. Prayer. And the person and the person gave up the ghost in my office. He wanted to shame me. But my Jesus, who promised me, he said, I will always be with you. <laughs> my God. Before I knew what was happening, the face of the girl has changed. For me from the mouth and from the nose. Resurrection power. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in your mortal body, that same power will quicken you. And I read from the book of John chapter 5 also. Say, as the father has sent me, the father has life in himself, so he has given the power for the son to give life to whosoever he will. And the person was in my office dead. I had to kneel down like this. And the Lord said, begin to breathe the breath of life into her nostril. Father, let the life of this girl come. Let it come back. It was a warfare prayer. That was a day I saw people struggling with death. The devil choked her. She struggled and struggled and gave up. Not in Africa, in Naive. Well, uh, uh, in Dera. But Jesus Christ that I'm preaching. The resurrection and the life himself. The all-powerful God. The most reliable name. Dependable. Supernatural. You know him for yourself. You will experience his wonder. We don't talk grammar. We speak about the resurrection power as we spoke and we prayed and we prayed. Continue to speak. Continue to breathe in our nostril. Foam the mouth in the nostril. And suddenly she came back. How many of you have heard that they said the cold hands of death? She, she was shivering. She was coming from a long journey. She was shivering. She said, I'm cold. I said, I know. And the Lord said, remove your suit. Let her wear it. In less than five seconds, she said, I want to remove it. I'm hot. <laughs> Let nobody deceive you. Jesus is real. Yeah. Oh, somebody say, Pastor, is it true what you are talking about? Go and check our archives. Real. My daughter saw, saw me. <laughs> she said, Daddy, I've never seen you like this before. I said, uh-uh. <laughs> Lion came to snatch one of my uh, sheep. And I will just watch like that. No, but do you know the reason why it's important for you to come to church? This lady, the previous night, saw herself choking in her dream. The devil had wanted to kill. If she never came to church that day, she would have died in her sleep. She came normally for church service, and at the end of the service, said, let me see, Pastor. Something pulled her. Let me see, see with the man of God. And just meeting with the man of God, what will have happened in her closet happened right there in my office. I speak over your lives. Sons and daughters of GKC, as many of you under this prophetic umbrella, I speak over your life, no premature death. Amen. Every power from the pit of hell, asking for your head, I declare, may they go down for your sake in the name of Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. Every way starts from generation to generation. And they are saying they will not stop until you go down. I speak by the power of God. May they be wasted in the name of Jesus. 
I came to tell you this morning that Jesus is real. Jesus is alive and Jesus is well. The Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's still a man of authority. He's still a man of power. In his name there is victory. In his name there is deliverance. In his name there is hope. Every hopelessness in your life I command. Uh, let it turn around for testimony. How many testimony can I tell you? How many testimonies? Jesus. I remember the testimony of Mrs. Tayo. She just came from this center and said, Daddy, I need to see you. She came to the headquarters. How many months ago now? Maybe about seven or eight months. And just in my office, she was just sitting opposite. No laying of hands. You devil, wherever that arrow came, back to the sender. And she started scratching my head. It was the arrow of insanity. No mortal man can see it. Scratching. Scratching. You say, why did she have to come to do it? She's supposed to come to call. She's the next I pray for you, the load that is not yours. Although the devil wants to force it upon you, I say no in the name of Jesus. If I tell you, brethren, that the ministry you are is a dangerous ministry. Prophetic. And the devil knows it. As a matter of fact, I can tell you. Pastor Labode is a notorious wanted personality in their kingdom. And so they can do everything to track me. But the God that we serve will never allow them. Yes. Several times they've come to kill me. But Jesus will not allow. In my dream they've come with guns and everything. At one time, somebody brought Coca-Cola. He said, drink. I say, you open it, drink it. He said, no, I'm not. I say, I say, open it yourself and drink. At one time, another person brought gun. He said, I will shoot you. I said, try it. Try. And the person pulled the trigger. The bullet went from the hit the person. At another time, a lion came. Lion now. He said, I will. Uh, uh, I looked at that. I said, you lion. You don't know me. I'm lion myself. <laughs> I made sure I did like this. <laughs> <laughs> if you are not strong in the spirit realm, they will make you a slave. We are talking to you today about this Jesus. Yes, He's too real. Yes, know him for yourself. Yes, that you walk in power. Yes, you walk in authority. Yes, you get to your place of what it doesn't matter. You may be a cleaner there. Get there with the understanding that I'm not ordinary. Yes, Jesus, the son of God, is with me. Yes, are you a taxi driver? As soon as you enter, be conscious of the fact that he's with you. Accident, where is he coming from? One young man came to the office one day. The brother said, oh, well, can you imagine? I've just kept you people standing. Wonderful people be seated. <laughs> you all of you forgot yourself already. <laughs> this young man came and he said, Pastor, my mom wants to go for operation now. Far away in Cameroon. And he said, but I said, I don't care. But I brought a seed now. With this seed, I'm believing God that she will not go for the operation. I said, really? And the Lord said to me, don't close your eyes. Remain seated. That is why those of you who are deliverance, who are into deliverance, you are praying on people. Don't close your eyes. Oh. <laughs> and don't put on, don't wear a tie. 
this agbada is just because of Easter. That's not <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And as the guy knelt down, suddenly the beast in him manifested. <laughs> and he tore his shirt to pieces right in the office. And on that day, I was just in the office with my wife. Nobody. Nobody in the office except me and my wife. In less, eh? What did you say? <laughs> in less than five minutes, they can just, uh, they can dignity just show up. I said, read me. Do you know that that guy, that guy was well dressed when he came to the office? I had to send to go and buy for him another shirt. Because the devil tore the shirt he wore to the church. I'm praying for you. In UAE, the powers that wants to waste you, to reduce you to nothing, resurrection power is against them. The power that said they will not let you rest, we will lay them to rest in the name of Jesus. The powers that said they will waste your resources, waste your potential, oppress you and defeat you on the battlefield, they will not succeed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Brethren, the Jesus that I'm preaching is not dead, he's alive. That Jesus is the one backing me up in ministry. Is the one answering when we pray. When we call him, he shows up. Shall we rise up this morning and begin to come against every power of the grave? Every power of the grave. Because Jesus defeated the devil. Jesus defeated the devil. Jesus Christ conquered the grave. You will conquer. Open your mouth and begin to speak against the power of the grave. Speak against the power of the grave. The power of the grave, they swallow up your potential, they swallow up your goodness, they swallow up your marriage, they swallow up your health. That grave, let the thunder of God blast the grave. Every grave that has swallowed up your potential, Watashako Takabaya, Lembriante Shalimarado Goshege. Watashanda Lima La Toa Randea Kosha Lei Paco Sinkerian in an anamo Shadiria Baha Colan in Iminaha Shampalian in Amosi Coran in Amosha Palianticia Giria Laba Santo Walu Shabi La Kuntabi Rata Sapaya Galalelia. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I'm angry against the grave. If the grave could not accommodate Jesus, his majestic nature will not allow the grave to hold him down. Now, the Bible says something in the book of Matthew, chapter 27. Listen to this. Jesus, listen, verse 50. Matthew 27, verse 50. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veils of the temple was rent in the twin from the top to the bottom. And the earth, the earth did quake. And the rocks rent and the graves were opened and many bodies many bodies of the saints which slept arose because Jesus entered they have to come out the king of glory went to Hades and those who have been held in captivity as soon as Jesus showed up there the resurrection and the life the bible says the dead bodies came out of their graves And you know what? They saw them walk on the streets of Jerusalem. And I'm challenging every grave that has been holding down your virtue. The graves that has been holding down your children. 
the grapes that has been holding down your potentials, the grapes holding your finances, evil graves, I command thunder. Until Jesus went there, all these ones were there. They were locked up in graves. All of them. They couldn't help themselves. The devil held them there in that realm. And as Jesus showed up, the dead people came out of their grave and they started walking, meaning that you will now begin to see your testimonies. You begin to witness dangerous testimonies. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Please, I encourage you, believe. The Lord said to me, continue to preach about my son. Preach him to people. He is the savior. He is the hope of the world. And also preach about the Holy Ghost. He is a power base. Brethren, there are miracles that has happened in this ministry that if I, God will give me the grace, maybe we're going to have a book on all the chronicles of miracles in GKC. There are some testimonies that when you hear them, you will think this is a lie. No, no, no. This cannot be. Pastor Abraham. The wife was pregnant. And the, wa the wife, the pregnancy, from about three months, the baby got a bridge in the womb. Was not in this position. Do you understand? Okay, it was like this. And the man will not go to the hospital by faith. But for the woman, to the woman, you were she was thinking that the man was wicked. Faith is able to dare the undearable. Faith will hold on to God to the last, believing that God will never fail. Faith. Now on the due date, I mean, it was on, on a particular whatever, and the Holy Spirit just prompt, prompted me. I don't visit people unless it gives me clear instruction. Go to this place. There, there's something he wants to do. We are not pastors that parade people's houses without a mission. I'm too valuable to him. My words are valuable. When I, when I show up in a place, there is a mission there. There is an assignment. Now, getting to their house, I didn't meet them in the house. It, that was on a Friday. So on Saturday, I was home. Usually, I sleep early in the morning. You know, And as soon as I went to bed, my wife was not, she was still awake. And their call came through. And the woman was in pain. She needed to be attended to. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me call the man of God. And I came. Listen to me. There was no need to pray now. A lion is a lion, even if he's sleeping. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. A lion that is just taking a nap. And uh, a goat is passing by. He says, hey, lion, you are sleeping. <laughs> Let the lion wake up and roar. So I picked, let's say, get a bottle of water. And she got a bottle of water. Father, in the name of Jesus, that is no longer ordinary. It is not the blood of this Jesus we are talking about. The blood that was shed 2,000 years ago. Now that water is not the blood. Drink, drink it now. As soon as she drank the blood... The baby repositioned in the womb. Instantly. Reposition. Eh? And the baby was ready to come in the apartment. No medical surgery. No operation. Supernatural power of God. Turned the baby. Positioned the baby. And as they saw the baby, the man cried. Hey, neighbor, what you do? <laughs> the baby is here. They now pack this woman. Package her to the car. She delivered in the car. <laughs> unaided. <laughs> ah. I'm sharing this testimony to let you know that Jesus is real. Yes, and thank God we believe 
we believe, and I'm sure you also believe. So blessed is she that believeth. There has to be a performance. Performance of what? Performance of miracle. Performance of testimony. Aha. Uh -huh. That visa. That visa issue. There will be a supernatural miracle. That residency. I stand as a messenger of God and I declare there is help for you in Jesus name. How it will happen, I don't have an idea. But if Jesus indeed died and resurrected, if we are not lying on him, if this Jesus died and resurrected, you are coming back with a dangerous testimony. Believe him. If you have not handed over your life to him, entrust your life to him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not physical, but you can feel his impact. He's a spirit. And you also, you are a spirit. And you can communicate. I tell people, the easiest way for you to be connected to the Holy Spirit it's not you kneeling down six hours say you are praying. Mm -mm. It's a way of life. It's a way of life. It's what you know. You are just connected. You are connected to the spirit. Amen. <laughs> you are connected. So as soon as I say, Father, he asked my son, so what is it again? Daddy, please help me attend to this matter. Just like that. A boy was in, in coma in, in, in South Africa. The family, call, the, the doctor said to the mom now, he said, mom, go now. Go and be arranging the funeral of your son because he will die. And the parents started going to the funeral parlor. But somebody told the woman, hey, there is a man of God from Dubai. There is a program, Maximum Impact. And you know our program, God selects people that attend, especially those that he just want to favor. And the woman came. I said, take this bottle of liquid fire. The Lord said, dip your finger into it. Let her take it to the, the son in the hospital. Administer it on him. The boy that was already in coma, they are already preparing his funeral. The supernatural power of Jesus, the resurrection power, came upon him. Brought this boy from that bed. And that same guy is alive to today. Your own matter is settled. Today, physically, physically, I just want to celebrate with you. I, 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 there is something from me that I want to give you. I just want to give you something. And that what I want to give you is just by handshake. On behalf of this Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I want to shake your hands. And let's see what is going to happen. I, I want to congratulate you on behalf of this Jesus. Somebody came to my office. The person has not conceived in 22 years. And I told the person, I said, there is a reason why God brought you to this ministry. I hope you are going to stay. That the devil will not remote you. Understand? The man, the doctor said to him that there is no how he can impregnate a woman. Because the sperm is, is deader than dead. Like Sinai said. But you know what Jesus did? Jesus went in an operation at night, began to operate on the scrotum of the man, removed those things that needed to be removed because that is where the sperm is produced, and made the man ready, fit, and the wife became pregnant. What are you talking about? So people are talking about that uh, Jesus tried. It's because they don't know this Jesus. Please, I want you to help me tell somebody, please know this Jesus for yourself. I ran up today. I have a lot. 
I will, I will continue in the evening as signs and wonders go by. But before we go, I just want to rejoice with you. And I want to congratulate you. Just an handshake. And I believe. Is today your first time here? Really? Pekola tegeri atabaya. Take it in the name Jesus. You believe. Take it. You cannot remain the same again. In Jesus' name, go. Come. In the name Jesus, take the blessing. In Jesus' name, come, 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 come. It's just an handshake. On behalf of Jesus, Marutako Shandaladia, Me Prontu Shandalia Koga. In the name of Jesus, congratulations to everyone. In the name of Jesus, the very life of my Jesus, the Jesus that I preach, take his life, take his help. In the name of Jesus, take his help. Shake me very well. Come, come, come. How are you shaking like this? This is how they shake a hand. In the name of Jesus. I give you the hand of my Jesus. It's not ordinary. Receive help from him. Receive help from him. Help from above. In the name of Jesus. Receive help from him. Receive help. Receive help. Receive help. Help from above. In Kalo to Kusha Kala de Yadia. Receive help from him. Help. Help. I give it to you. Take. In the name of Jesus, receive help from him. Receive help. What money cannot deliver? What money cannot deliver? In the name of Jesus. Receive. Receive help, oh God. In the name of Jesus, receive help from above. I give you the hand of my Jesus. Whatever the infirmity, whatever the sickness, whatever the limitation, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive help, help from above. Perfection of your testimony in the name of Jesus.
every mission of thieves I eradicate it totally take your blessing and it is permanent with you bring your hands rise up continue to win Shown her. Yeah. But I'm showing her the resurrected Jesus. Yeah. Jesus died and resurrected. You are showing her what? I give her life. Okay, okay, okay. What date have you given her? What date? I say what date? Few months. Who says so? few months. Watch of if I say now, nah, I overturn that. <laughs> now I told you in GKC, the devil cannot strike anybody without my father showing me. Can you see what is happening? You showed her. Now, let your power depart now. Every of your resistance. Let it go from you. Let your resistance go. Amen. What is the strategy you have adopted through which to take her? What is your strategy? What is your strategy? What is going to be your strategy? Huh? White muscle. <laughs> what will be your strategy? I want to know. Come on, speak now. I know all things. Okay. Now, what of if I give you the blood of Jesus Christ? I give you. She's not taking it. But Jesus already redeemed her. This one is not your victim. She's not. Why did she come? This one is not your victim. She's already redeemed. The blood of Jesus, the Son of God. Can you see the reality of the Jesus I'm preaching? Jesus tasted death 
so that she will not die shame, shamefully. Now, that particular month, the date you have given unto her, I cancel it. In the name of Jesus, I cancel it. It will never be. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. That is what Jesus said and I give her that in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave her everyone. I place upon your forehead the mark of Jehovah. It is the mark of touch not. If there is anyone here with an unknown appointment, you see, that is what we kept saying. Nobody knew that. But the devil. Now the Jesus that I'm preaching is the only one that can stop that evil appointment. And he has stopped it. I pray for you. I pray for your family. No disaster. No agony. In the name of Jesus. That grave that the devil has dug for you and your sibling, a member of your family, I cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ over this woman. Can you imagine what is more dangerous than for you to have an appointment and you are not aware of it? The husband is a servant of God. None of us will sorrow over our wives. Amen. None of us will sorrow over our children. Amen. It's a verdict from the mouth of the Lord to this congregation in the name of Jesus and to GKC worldwide in the name of Jesus. Brethren, this is one of the reasons why we always encourage you. Yes, cough it out in the name of Jesus. Cough it out. That is the supernatural that you can't explain. But it's with us in this ministry by his mercy. Not because of my age. Not because of the fact that we pray. It's just by his mercy. Please, help me tidy her up very well. That is a deliverance for her. Can you see how my father works? Brought her in order for her to meet this appointment for this day. Jesus is awesome. Yes. Vomit it, whatever it is. Life is yours. I say life is yours. the son of the living God. Take it for that person. You're standing in the gap for that person. Just take it for that person. Take it. Holy Spirit. Take it. Can you see something? 
the image of somebody. Just the image. And the Lord is the Lord is routing the power through the picture on the phone. Whatever you desire for that person, I release it now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. Take it. Take it. Take it. Let there be perfection of miracles. Leave us. Leave us. Let there be perfection of miracles. Perfection of miracles. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody shout amen. amen. Okay. Bring out your phone. You want to connect with somebody. You want the blessing to touch your brother, your sister. We are still in the atmosphere of uprooting evil family trees. You see? I told you, three days can never be enough for that program. Three days can never be enough. It's just a touch. In the name Jesus. Kabaya Tasata. Aha. That same person is connecting that the same blessing. The same blessing. The same, the same, the same. The same. Your child, your daughter, your, your uncle, your brother, your mom is the same touch. A, a, a brother was a brother. One of our brother, the, the one of our sisters, the brother was bed, you know, was uh, urinating. What do they call it? Bedwetting. Uh -huh. Bedwetting. A grown up man. Maybe about 25 years. He became a concern to that brother to that sister. And he said, man of God, please, can you help? And I said, do you have the picture of the man? Lay hands on the picture. And the boy in Nigeria started vomiting because he was eating at that time. Deliverance touched him. He started vomiting. That was the end of that bedwetting. Supernaturally, whoever you standing in for, they receive the same help from God. The same help. The same help. In the name of Jesus. The same help. The same help. The same help. The same help from God. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The same help. The name of Jesus. The same help. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Touching them. That is what happened in the spirit realm. The same power. The same power through Jesus, the Son of God. The same Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Aha. The 
Estimate the power of Jesus. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Come back, woman. Congratulations. Now shake me now. In Jesus' name. With long life will it satisfy you and your siblings and it will show you his mighty salvation go and bring multiple testimony the sage is broken in Jesus name please help me celebrate my Jesus no chains are holding me yes I'm free Chains are holding me. Chains are holding me. It's who I choose. It's who I choose. Hey, I'm free in thee. I'm free in thee. In Christ I'm free. In Christ I'm free. No more chains. No more no chains. chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. Why won't you love my Jesus? Why, why won't you love him? The only defender of the helpless, the only one that can harass death, the only one that can abolish death, the only one that gives eternal hope, eternal life, the present help in time of need. Let me say this specifically and categorically upon every one of you, every sons and daughter of GKC. Over your brothers, your sisters, you will not weep. Yeah. Your parents, if they are not old and old enough and you release them, they are not going anywhere. Yeah. My own mom was 94 years before she went to be with the Lord and she was active. Strong bones. I never sent money for her for medicine, no. All our parents, old age is their portion. Just because you are here at this service of this wonderful Easter, I speak. May you all experience the resurrection power. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please help me shout that amen one time, but let it be powerful. Before we take our offering, please I encourage everyone the mighty work that God is doing in this house is too big for this number of people. Be the mouthpiece of God. Tell somebody. Now, there are people they are not aware. They have death sentence on their head. Those are the ones that you see, they sleep, they say they don't wake up again. They've already killed them. It is only the power of Jesus that can avert it. Whatever you saw here is not drama. It's real. And whatever the devil concludes, nobody can overturn it except this Jesus Christ. Tell them. You don't have to quote from Genesis to Revelation before you tell somebody about Jesus. Uh -huh. Just tell them. Come and see. Come and see what? You just come. At one time, I was sharing the flyer at Dubai Church. And I shared the flyer, and the, a guy said, oh, is it party? I said, yes. Rooftop, big party. <laughs> big party. I said, come. You dancing? He said, yes. You come there. You will dance very well. Praise the Lord. So make sure you tell somebody. Let them come and partake of this wonder of Jesus. Praise the Lord. If you're a tighter, kindly come to the front. Or you're a covenant partner, come to the front. If you are among those people who pledge and you, you have not redeemed your pledge, especially concerning this venue, you can also bring your pledge. Covenant partners and titers, kindly come to the front. 
we said today is Omega Thanksgiving, but the Lord gave us room for deliverance. No problem. That is part of what we came to church for. As soon as you create the opportunity for him, he moves. He's the owner of the church. You don't tell him what to do. The Titus, please. Please move this way. Aha. Please come, come, come. Lift up your tithe or your covenant commitment above your head. And make sure you speak. Just for 30 seconds. Tell your Heavenly Father, in the name of this Jesus we preach, tell him, Lord, I brought this unto you in faith that you are my source. Father, may I not run dry. May I always have to give in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for these, your children. I bless them with your blessing. Lord, as we round up this month of I'm blessed to be a blessing, may they carry this blessing for the rest of their lives. Amen. And may the blessing upon their life be transgenerational. Amen. The works of your hands are blessed. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're tight here. Your covenant commitment in the box. The rest of us, shall we rise up? as we bring our offering. We're doing two offerings this, this morning. The first is our worship offering. And the second one is our Thanksgiving offering to round up the month.